Watching Fox Sports, home to Major League Baseball, the National Football League, NASCAR, and the BCS. This is America's number one sports network. Monday night on Fox, it's 24. Tonight, it's 21. 21 drivers taking center stage in the Budweiser shootout here in Daytona. Headline acts like Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson. They're all here to go racing with you on Fox. Tonight, under the lights of legendary Daytona, NASCAR returns to Fox for its seventh straight year of Next Hill Cup. And what a run we have been on. Boogity, boogity, boys! Saturday night, and we're set for a Budweiser shootout fight. NASCAR's brightest stars are all out tonight. The very talented Tony Stewart will be behind the wheel of the 20 car. Dale Jr. will be running his very famous number eight. Young gun Casey Kane will be firing on all pistons. And of course, defending Daytona 500 champion and Nextel Cup champion Jimmy Johnson will be strutting his stuff in the 48 car. It's a good old-fashioned fight. The Budweiser Shootout is next on Fox. And Fox Sports welcomes you to the start of a new season, and we're in the fast lane headed toward the Daytona 500 as we come to you from NASCAR's legendary location, the Daytona International Speedway. 21 of the best drivers for unscripted drama, an all-out aggressive 70-lap shootout at about 190 miles per hour. We're glad to have you with us on Fox, the 29th running of the Budweiser shootout. Before the engines rev up, everyone will slow down, pause, and reflect for opening ceremony. Gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Atlantic High School Junior ROTC presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as we offer a moment of silence for the recent tornado victims of Central Florida. And Reverend John Long III of Tubman King Community Church delivers tonight's invocation. Before we endeavor to seek you, dear God, for ourselves, we ask that you look down with favor and be gracious on all who have been devastated by the recent tornadoes. And we thank you, Lord, for another day and for another opportunity for the indomitable human spirit that is made manifest in competition and accomplishment. Watch over this racetrack and, if necessary, intervene to assure that this evening's event remains cloaked in safety. While we watch the race, we ask that you watch over the drivers and the crews, the spectators and the staff, over all that is done this night until each of us is snug in our beds. We pray and ask this in your most holy and precious name, and let the people of God say, Amen. Race fans, please welcome Asylum Curb Records recording artist Cowboy Crush as they perform our national anthem. Oh, say can you by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed as the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the
Archer Cowboy crowd. With family and friends by their sides, the driver's ready to roll. The anthem, they always do it right. Just the right touch in NASCAR. The Budweiser shootout from Daytona moments away. We welcome you back, Daytona Beach, Florida. Cool Florida temperatures, about 60 degrees and a mild breeze that's picking up a little bit for the guys getting ready to go 70 laps. And with tonight's running of the Budweiser shootout, NASCAR's short off-season coming to an end. It goes by fast. And in case you're wondering what your favorite driver did on his vacation, we went to work to find out. What I did on my vacation was I went fishing in Mexico. I took all my friends uh, skiing in Maryland. Yeah, my time off, I went to Australia for two weeks. And I went to Hawaii. I went there and went to Waikiki and learned how to surf. I had to do a little hang loose and was able to get up on a board for the first time ever and be able to ride it all the way into the shore. It was really, really great time. There wasn't any palm trees or any sunshine. It was more or less building a new house. I caught lots of fish, drank a few margaritas, a few cervezas. Went to the Seahawks in the Bears game at, at Soldier Field. I just had a blast. I took the girlfriend to the Bahamas and uh, had a lot of fun doing that. Just. It was kind of a trade-off deal, you know. If I get to take the, the guy skiing, I, I got to take her to the Bahamas. Deep sea fishing's awesome. Uh, nobody got sick this time. Normally, somebody always gets sick because the water's rough. Keep it loose, lifestyle. Back with uh, Jeff Hammond. You oh, never take a vacation. No, I don't take a vacation. But let me tell you something, Chris. You need to check out where our buddy D.W. did during the offseason. It was uh, rather unusual. This was for charity back in December. DW performed yeah, in the Nutcracker. Yeah, that's the deal. With the Nashville Ballet. And let's just say to be charitable, it was the best ballet performance ever by a three-time cup champion. He was asked to be Mother Ginger. He thought it had something to do with Gilligan's Island. <laughs> well, I, listen, I, I, I am so embarrassed. I mean, my hair was a mess. <laughs> I, 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 and I didn't have time to get my I didn't get my makeup right. I mean. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I normally part. would look a lot better How, than that. You could fit a whole race team, a pit crew. Uh, did, the, did NASCAR impound that outfit, Daryl? There were eight little children under my dress, and they all come running out, and I chased them off stage <laughs> going, biggity, 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 and they loved it. There you go. All right, well, uh, Daryl getting ready with uh, Larry and Mike to call the race tonight. Oh, come on, you got to lay off. He did it for charity. Why, why have I got to lay off of him? <laughs> because, uh, he... because this time the shoe's on the other foot, D.W. I mean, you're always picking on me. Don't I never thought any... I'd ever see you in a bonnet. Don't give him any hints with the show on the other foot. He'll want to perform in Cinderella. <laughs> well, at least right. I didn't jump off. At least I didn't jump off of the thing. I <laughs> know <laughs> you. You maintained your balance. Uh, the conditions tonight yep. for a 70 lap shootout race like this. Uh, what have you seen, heard from earlier in the garage? I'm thinking right now a lot of these guys are saying the tires, as hard as they are, they're going to give up a little bit of grip, and it's going to really hurt them. So look for these guys early on to kind of get strung out, ride the first section, and then work on it. To, during that 10-minute break. All right, Denny Hamlin, the rookie winner last year, only one rookie in the field tonight. Let's head down to the track here in Daytona and hear those uh, magical words, first time this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Capitol Recording Artist, Dirk Bentley, as he gives the most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your engines. with the Budweiser shootout for the second straight year. Will Dale Jarrett win it for a fourth time? What about Kevin Harvick still looking for his first Budweiser shootout win? From the World Center of Racing, the Budweiser shootout on Fox. Welcome back here in Daytona. Quick check on the weather conditions as we get ready to go racing. Jeff Hammond and I will be here throughout the night. Keep you up to date with things to get you set for the Budweiser shoot shootout. Let's head up to the booth. Our fellow News Corp employees, Darrell Walter, Larry McReynolds, and the man voted on NASCAR.com as the most popular play-by-play -play announcer in this sport. Mike Joy, Mike, congratulations on that. Looking forward to another great season. Thanks, Chris, and so are we, and what a way to kick it off. This is spring training. It's the first time out of box. It's the first race, but, oh, by the way, the one-game World Series is just nine days away, the Daytona 500. But what a way to start here under the lights in a race that dates to 1979, when it was the Bush Clash, 20 laps, 
Buddy Baker started on the pole, led the whole way. DW was second. You won it two years later. But for the fat last five years, the format is different. 20 laps, then 50 laps. So what will you do in those 20 laps so that you're sure your car is right for the final 50 laps. I'm the onboard computer. During this 20 lap run right here, I'm going to be on that radio every lap. The car's doing this now. The car's doing that now. I'm pushing here. I'm loose here. And I'm going to be telling them everything I can about that race car so when I make that stop, they can adjust it up so I can run that last 50 wide open every lap. All right, Larry, it's a 20 lap sprint and then the 50 lap shootout. Can anybody here go 50 laps without a stop for fuel and tires? That's a question that 21 crew chiefs have been asking themselves for about the last 24 to 48 hours because 50 laps is just outside of the window what the fuel mileage says they can run. But you can almost bet on this. There will be several of them. If we do not get a caution where they can come in and top off a of fuel, they will gamble because what's this race all about? It's not about a good finish. It's about winning the race. There's the field on the preliminary laps. And we'll go downstairs to our NASCAR on Fox all-star pit crew, starting with race strategy and Dick Bergeron. Indeed, tonight's race will be all about strategy. Not who has the fastest car, but who, in fact, has the very best strategy. In that second 50-lap segment, do you risk running out of fuel? Try to go the whole way in that 50-lap segment, not pit. Keep track position, or do you come in, get fresh tires, and have a faster car? As for the drivers, who do you hook up with? Kurt Busch starts in 19th position. Within the first three laps of the event, he is going to try to hook up with Ryan Newman, his teammate, who starts ninth. It's all about strategy. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Last Sunday night, Tony Stewart text message his good buddy and Super Bowl MVP Peyton Manning. He said, now that you've won your Super Bowl, I need to go out and win mine, meaning the, the Daytona 500. He says success during speed weeks is all about momentum and learning. He hopes to gain a little bit of both here tonight. He also said two words should play major factors later tonight timing and handling the temperatures are much cooler meaning you should start the chess match your move to put yourself in proper position for a win tonight much earlier than normal he should know he's a two-time winner of this event to Chris Devota. last year at this time nobody really knew Denny Hamlin's name after he won this event he started walking differently talking differently he eventually bought his own airplane last summer nobody knew David Gilliland's name then he won a bush race that led to a cup ride. That led to a Talladega pole, which led to this tonight, his first race at Daytona. He now has something in that car he didn't have when he got here earlier this week, confidence. He was very quick in the Daytona 500 practice earlier today. His team thinks he can do it. If he can pull that off, he would no longer be David Gilliland. He would be David over Goliath. Will he be the next household name? Will he be the next Denny Hamlin? To Steve Burns. Thank you, Krista. All those things are true that we've just talked about but you know what the one common denominator is they all want to have fun this race isn't about points there's a million dollar purse but one driver told me the dirty little secret is they would race for a six inch trophy even if millions of you at home weren't watching jeff hammond Steve, we've heard about strategy, we've heard about fuel, we've heard about guys having fun, but tonight it can all come down to this is a real simple deal. Good to your tires. A harder tire than we've seen here in years past, and a lot of drivers are saying and complaining about the grip of these tires. And what does that mean to you folks at home? Well, have you ever tried going out and playing basketball and street shoes instead of your tennis shoes? Well, that's the kind of grip they're talking about tonight. Slip sliding away. So not be talking about feet, we'll be talking about those hands, Mike. Those hands and whether or not you can stay up on that wheel. Thanks, Jeff. Each driver wants to make sure his hand is steady enough to collect and cash the winner's check. Yeah, the winner of this race is going to collect $3,000 a lap. And, and the thing about it is, they talk about having fun. You, ha you start off with that kind of an attitude, but it doesn't last long. Thursday night was big draw night for the Budweiser shootout. Dale Jarrett was the lucky winner. He drew the right bottle up on the speed stage. And for the second time, Jarrett chose the pole position. And an honorary Budweiser Pole Award for tonight's shootout. For the first time in Nextel Cup history, a Toyota in competition. And Dale Jarrett will start his Camry from the pole opposite Scott Riggs.
There's Jared and Riggs on the front row. Boris said with Brian Vickers, Rick Biffle, Kyle Bush, Kenny Schrader, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, and Mark Martin in a new ride this year. Jeff Gordon with Jeff Burton. One rookie, David Gilliland. He shares row seven with Tony Stewart. Casey Kane and Bill Elliott, Dale Jr., Elliott Sadler, Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick, and last year's winner, Denny Hamlin, drew the final spot in the field. Let me see if I can talk to the uh, poll setter here real quick. DJ, it's uh, DW up in the Fox booth, buddy. Can you get a copy here? Now loud, clear. What you gonna do, dude? I mean, you're on the pole and uh, look like you're in pretty good shape. Can you stay up there? No, I hope so, Darrell. Uh, this is more of a test session for us, and it's a good place for us to start to see what our car does out front. And uh, hopefully I can uh, get the lead here and hold it for a while, or this whole first segment anyway. Uh, we'll do what we can. And, uh, you know, very competitive field, but uh, uh, this UPS Toyota uh, should be just fine. All right, we'll be watching, and uh, you've got to hold her wide open now. See if I can hold it wide open. <laughs> Ten four, but good luck. Jared, a three-time winner of what is now the Budweiser shootout. Opposite Scott Riggs, who missed the Daytona 500, but stormed back to have a great season, winning both poles at Lowe's Motor Speedway last year. And the real challenge for these guys, you heard Jeff Hammond talking about the tire that doesn't have as much grip. And then when we interviewed Dale Earnhardt Jr., he said his car is pushing. That means he's turning the, the front wheel going through the corner and the front end just sliding. And a lot of that is the product of the harder tire that Goodyear's brought here. The reason they brought a tougher tire is these guys have bigger fuel tanks right now. So Goodyear was a, being a little more conservative with the tire because of that. Only three times in the past 10 years has this race been won from a starting spot inside the top 10? Does it matter? Anywhere you start is a good spot? It just seems to me the further back you are, the better off you are. It happens time and time again. Guys in the back, they get that big suck down the back straightaway from the draft, go right to the front. Kind of a set and duck out front right now. The east banking, turn four, banked 31 degrees, steeper than the roof of your house. The pace car will lead them off turn four, down the 1,200-foot short chute. The pace car will dive to pit road, and you'll hear those words you've longed for since last year. <laughs> DW, I've been waiting over six months to tell you, buddy. Reach up there and pull those belts tight. One more time, let's get her done! All right, folks. I've been waiting for this all winter long, too. Buggity, buggity, buggity! Let's go racing, boys! lights flashing cars all over the place just running so close together Riggs, Vickers break out front and they're able to get to the bottom of the racetrack the best friend you have besides drafting partners is that yellow line at the bottom of the racetrack do you know how much confidence it takes and how much trust you have to have to run that close to somebody at 190 miles an hour and here comes Vickers Riggs leads the first lap and Vickers Brings the outside lane on by. Kyle Busch now second. Jimmy Johnson in 48, fighting for third. Now, last night in practice, it seemed like the bottom line against the bottom of the racetrack was moving, but so far, after about a lap and a half, looks like the outside line is moving. Fourth is Mark Martin in the Army Chevy. Stewart drops low in that March number 20. Tacks on to Johnson and Kevin Harvick. Right behind Tony Stewart moves up. Tight formation right now. Three wide back here. Jeff Gordon kind of caught in the middle. That's not a good place to be. Not comfortable. Mark Martin right there in fourth place in the Army car. He's looking pretty good, too. Jeff Burton, last year's Daytona 500 pole sitter, now leads the outside lane, but he's back at eighth place. A couple of tear-offs flying off the windshield. Let's all go by there. Doesn't hurt anything. It's plastic. And that goes over the windshield, kind of to give a protective covering over it and where they can pull it off instead of trying to clean it. 
right now what the guys are doing, they're jockeying for a position. They're just trying to find a place they can fall in line. They're probably going to try to get single file here pretty quickly and then do what I said, analyze. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 8 car behind Bill Elliott in the 37 car. Looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's in a box right there. He, he can't go forward. Yeah, they'll get sorted out here pretty quickly. Uh, ooh, boy, Junior's car is moving around a lot like it did last night. That car was very uncomfortable. And, Larry, I just saw 7,700 RPM on our tack. That's a lot of RPM for these engines with the restrictor plate. That 37 was the 1987 winner of the shootout, Bill Elliott. That car looking a little loose off the corner. I just think Junior's car, either the car's not handling right or... Ah Look at the rookie. Kevin Hart, he's no rookie. Daryl just likes to call him <laughs> I that. I call him a rookie. <laughs> New leader is Kyle Busch, and look who he's brought to the party. Tony, Tony Stewart. Stewart. That 20 car, he's been working his way up there lap by lap. He wants to lead for this thing. Watching from our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam, suspended over the start-finish line and try all here at Daytona. That's like a restart. They're all lined up like they're going to restart. Whoa, Tony. Easy, boy. Now you see Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car on the high side. Kyle Busch's teammate, he's trying to get a little brigade up there to push that outside line to the front. Looks like he's going to get a shove off turn two from Kevin Harvick side by side down the back stretch. You're riding with Denny Hamlin, last year's winner. He's come up into the top 10 from 21st. Now it looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. He's making his way to the front now. You know who, the he's, outside of you the know who he's looking for, Larry. He's looking for that 20 car. He's looking Tony for the Stewart. 20 car. They work really well together. They run well together. Still no clear advantage. Five laps complete. Still double and triple file. Now they look like they almost had Kyle Busch in a two-car trapped in the middle. You really can't go in the middle. It's either outside or on the bottom. Boy, that's so treacherous off of turn two when you come off of there three wide. You get the, that dreaded old push they talk about coming off there, and something's got to give. Last lap, 184 and a half miles an hour. Still running double five. And you'll hear us going octave up and we're talking about three wide like they're trying to get there. The racetrack's plenty wide enough, but remember, we keep talking about it. Over 185 miles per hour bouncing around. There's three lanes. There's just not enough room for three cars. Back at 11th place is Jeff Gordon, two-time winner of the shootout. Here's Dick Bergman. And almost as soon as the green flag dropped, Mike, he was talking about the water temperature going up in his number 24 car. Gordon with an overheating problem to Matt. Dick Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart, DW documented how they're such great unofficial teammates as you see Stewart sort of shuffled out. The thing is, Everyone else knows it, too. They try to keep the two of them apart. They try to pin those two out so they can't work together. As you can see, they're not together now, but they're trying. And I wish you would look at that gaggle of cars behind them. I mean, they are still three wide off of turn four. That's good news for Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kyle Busch, who lead this race. But look back there in the middle of that hurricane. We're having a casual contact in that little crowd right there. Just saw Gilliland bounce off of somebody. I think it was Vickers maybe yep. he just bounced off of. Brian Vickers in the middle, David Gilliland. And that M&M's 38 up high. There they are. And in the inside, Denny Hamlin. Kenny Schrader in the 21. Right there. One inside. Now, what you're hearing is these guys, they have a spotter. It's a pair of eyes up on top of the, of the grandstand here that's telling everything about that, what's around that race car to these drivers. And this is what we see here quite often, breaking up into two packs. We'll see what happens when we come back. Remember, it's not a shootout without a Budweiser. Welcome back to the Budweiser shootout where it's been single file all through the break and now things heat up. Kyle Busch to the outside. 
Yeah, and Jeff Burton as Tony Stewart comes to second. Kevin Harvick still leads, but for how long? Here comes Not Stewart on the bottom. Not for long. Finally made it to the front. I mean, that car is fast. And look at him. He, you can see the guys that can run wide open off the corner, and there's one of them in that 20 car. And look at Kyle Busch in the two car run right up on the quarter panel of Jeff Burton. We're hearing a com that these guys are complaining about getting a little loose, and when a car does that, it even makes it looser, makes the back end want to come around. 11 laps are complete after lap 20. They'll get a break to work on these cars, and then the 50 lap shootout finale. Steve? Mike, the first words I just heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. say a lap ago, just got loose in turns three and four. He's lost some positions. There he is behind Kurt Busch. Scored as fourth. But that looseness could go away because one of the things that happens is you burn off fuel, the car gets a little tighter. And everybody's been complaining about push. Whoa, did you see Stewart? That car jumped right sideways on him. But I think a lot had to do with where Kurt Busch and that two car was right there on his quarter panel, there. It made him loose like he did Jeff Burton a while ago. Man, Look what else it's done. When he got loose, the whole pack it, came right to him. Tightened everything up, and that's what happens. The guy in front of you has to squeeze out of the throttle, and you don't have time to react to it. That's what causes these accidents. Watch this. He's down on the bottom. And this is where the track's pretty rough. He's got the two-car bush right on his tail. Now, Harvick's out there where he sucks a little air off of him. He goes in there sideways. That's what you call loose end. And all that's happening, and the track has all those dips in it, too. It just magnifies that. Quite a save at 185 miles an hour. Now, a normal guy would slow down, but he just kept <laughs> on going. Stewart has already won twice this year. Open wheel races at Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the famed Chili Bowl in Tulsa. Looking for his third win of the year. Krista? Well, if you saw Greg Biffle at the start of the race, he dropped back like a rock. Starting fifth, he's currently running 16th. It's kind of just a victim of the draft. He says he's not sure if there's anything wrong with the car. If so, he's not sure what it is. He's trying to just hang in the draft and hold on until they make their stop. He started fifth again, dropped back, currently running 16th. It's the first time that Gilliland has ever been in a race at Daytona in a Nextel Cup car. He's in the sucker hole now. He's in the middle, and you can hear him lifting off the throttle. He can't stay wide open now six laps away from the break tony stewart leads kurt bush kevin harvick and dale earnhardt jr dale jarrett's view of the shootout field and look who's up to fifth place ken schrader 50 years old in his 17th budweiser shootout a two-time winner that last victory coming 17 years ago and there's schrader in the wood brothers Air Force number 21. And now is when you can really tell who's got a good handling race car, who can still partially, almost all the way, hold that thing wide open around here. Maybe squeeze it out a little bit, but not a lot. Because when those cars start to get loose and they start to push the front end, the steering wheel doesn't fix it. You have to start rolling. You got to roll up out of the gas. You don't have a lot of horsepower, and you kill your momentum. Two laps to the end of the first segment. And then they'll get a chance to work on these cars. All of these drivers will be competing at Daytona 500 qualifying tomorrow on Fox, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. They will not be using the same cars they're racing tonight in the Budweiser shootout. You know, one car that was working his way to the front, now you see him back there, the DuPont, the 24 car, Jeff Gordon. Remember, Dick Bergeron talked about the car is running hot. They put tape on the nose of these cars where the air flows to cool the water in the radiator. The more tape you put on, it helps the aerodynamics, but it also can heat the water up. I mean, Larry, look at the opening he's got. He's got just a little bit of an opening at the bottom of the grill at the top, and then that teeny bitty hole at the bottom. That's not much uh, opening for traffic. A couple you more to the brake. A couple more. That was his crew chief, Steve Letarte. So you would have to believe one of the adjustments they'll make during this break is take a little bit of that tape off. And that, that, that upsets the balance of the car. So now you got to be able to remember, when I take that tape off, i got to maybe make another little adjustment to go along with it. Kevin Harvick from Bakersfield, one of five native Californians in this race. Four drivers from North Carolina, two from Virginia. He leads Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, Kurt's younger brother, Kyle, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And those first seven cars, they've found the short way around, right down against the yellow line, bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, you see as we go along here, coming to the 20-lap mark, it's this front seven here, uh, seven or eight, and then there's another group that's uh, kind of falling back. 
And I really believe Tony Stewart in the 20 car, he was content once he got there to stay behind Kevin Harvick in the 29 to get to this lap 20. Twenty complete, and as the field comes caution to the back straightaway, watch your back. the caution is out. The drivers will come to pit road, and for ten minutes they'll be able to perform routine maintenance and changes. Then we'll go at it again. Man, I'm glad we got that break in. I'm out of breath. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. <laughs> about to do something this big, a little luck never hurts. Thanks for having us. Pit Road is open. Five different drivers led laps in those first 20 lap segment. Here's Kristen. The rookie, David Gilliland, just brought his car in for his very first pit stop at Daytona. The contact that was made with Kevin Harvick made his car tight. He thought the right fender was pushed in a little, little bit. That's the change they need to make. Matt. Tony Stewart has already shut his car off. Service has already been completed. Just taking a look at the front of the car and also around the side, you can see Jason Shapiro checking out the valence. But Smoke says the car really strong at this juncture. Steve? Well, Matt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was really excited at the end. He told Tony Erick Jr., hey, man, we were getting it done. This car is pretty decent. I need to get some help. I'm tired of being the helper. The car was running a little bit hot, so they took a little bit of tape off the grill on the nose of the car. Dick Bergren. Well, Kevin Harvick has been leading this race for so many laps, and that's a big surprise because the car was not good in practice. It wasn't handling well at all. But before he came in, Harvick told the crew he had not lifted his foot off the floor since the drop of the green flag. Handling so well, he has been running wide open all the way. Just a tad free, he said. So they've adjusted the air pressure in the tires just a little tiny bit to fix that. Virtually no adjustments to the car that was leading when that yellow flag came out. Only one car on pit road had the hood up, and it was this one, the low Chevrolet of Jimmy Johnson. We'll find out why when we come back. We're at the break after 20 green flag laps. We have 50 laps to go in the Budweiser shootout of 2007. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet on American Revolution. By DirecTV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on DirecTV. By Napa Auto Parts, Napa, get the good stuff. And by Pizza Hut, want more cheesy bites? Get America's favorite pizza. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, the Hollywood Hotel trackside. After 20 laps at the Budweiser Shootout, history made here, historic. Brian Vickers leading a lap. In, uh, in a Toyota. Kevin Harvick, your leader from back of the pack. What else has caught your eye? Well, uh, what else has caught my eye? The aggressiveness of this whole group. I mean, ever since the start of the green flag, or dropped the green flag, take a look at Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. They had to call down and tell him, or tell his crew chief, Tony Urey Jr., settle him down a little bit. Donuts on the side of a super speedway car, that's not something you normally see. And what about Dale Jarrett, pole sitter, falling all the way back? Now, you heard both uh, Daryl and Larry talk about, you know, sitting back a little bit right up front, not necessarily the place to be. No, but I think that, that he's got issues with his race car. He doesn't look like he's got the kind of race car that can pull back up to the front, at least in my opinion. And even though Vickers led that lap, he also went backwards also in the pack. And right there at the end of the race, he and Dale Jarrett were right at the back of the pack. So I think the Toyotas have still got a lot of work to do. All right, let's check in with uh, Dick Bergman. Dick? And I'm with Jimmy Johnson. Hood up on the car. Chad Canales underneath the rear end. What's going on? Oh, we're just making some small adjustments. I don't think I was getting wide open throttle there. We had uh, something floating around under the the gas pedal and uh, it was kind of hurting me there so this thing will be running much better now uh, car was a little tight at the end of that run so the guys are making some adjustments and we'll see what we got good luck in the second half steve burns well dick dale earnhardt jr has a donut on the side of his car right behind that number eight uh, dale before the race your crew chief i asked tony Uri jr is your car good he said yeah the car's good but i'm not sure about the setup and he laughed how about from where you're sitting yeah it ain't too bad uh we were really tight in practice, and we threw a setup in there we call the baseball setup because we ran it in a baseball car here in 01. 
and it seems to be turning really good. I sliding around a little bit, but uh, pretty wild out there. I know a lot of guys aren't, a lot of guys aren't, guys aren't running right now because uh, it's just that 20 laps really don't mean anything. So I don't think the whole, everybody's showing their cars, but we were, we were up there trying to take the lead. I was helping Kevin or whoever I could help that's driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. So, uh, and trying to get the lead a little bit myself. So we'll see what we can do this next uh, segment here. Well, Matt, we'll see if the uh, baseball setup is a home run in this next 50 laps. Another Chevrolet, Kyle Busch finished fourth in the first segment. What was the biggest thing that stood out over that first 20 laps? Uh, probably the steward incident there in one, but uh, as far as how everybody is, it looks like the eight car is pretty loose, and uh, 29 looks a little tight out front. Kurt and Stewart, they look pretty stout, and we're just kind of hanging out up there, so uh, we'll see if we can't we're not making any changes to it, so we'll see if we can't uh, take this Kellogg's Clark West Chevrolet a little bit further up towards the front and get back to the lead and try to keep it there. That's what it's about here, and hopefully we can go crack a beer when this thing's over. And also we'll see who can go, if anyone, the final 50 laps without stopping for fuel. This five team, they felt like from practice, Chris Devota, that they were about four laps, five laps short. But you know what? You never know here at Daytona. That is so true. Like perhaps a rookie running in the top 10. That's what David Gilliland was doing before contact made his car tight. But then window nets going up. We were going to ask David. I was talking to to him a bit before. He said the car was so good. He was talking to his crew chief, Todd Parrott. He said before that tight condition, before the contact with Kevin Harvick, he could do anything he wanted. His crew chief, Todd Parrott, said, David, you did the smart thing. Take care of the car. Get this 20-lap segment. We got plenty of time to work on it. Three minutes left to go while they sit here. When he gets back out, they think they're going to have a car that can work with others and can do something here in this shootout. Chris? Thanks, Krista. With uh, Jeff Hammond, Tony Stewart loose after taking the lead, currently second. You heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying, hey, these first 20 laps don't mean a whole lot, but what are we seeing? Well, what I'm seeing right now, the guys that are handling the best have been able to stay up toward the front, and particularly guys like Stewart, the Kevin Harvick car. We talked and heard from the, our, crew, our crew down on pit road that if you make any kind of bumps or bangs, the next thing you know, you're in trouble just like the 38 car. So, got to have a good handling car. Five different leaders, six different lead changes, averaging about 184 miles per hour. 50 laps to go at the Budweiser shootout here in Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. 20 laps complete in the Budweiser shootout. 50 laps to go. We've had the 10-minute break for everyone to make adjustment. Hood was up on Jimmy Johnson's car and that of Jeff Burton. Everyone has now pulled out from their pit stall except Jeff Gordon. You see his DuPont Chevy now beginning to roll. And they will resume the positions they were running in at the time of the caution flag after 20 laps. If you thought you could run 50 laps, you do not want to crank that engine or go any out on the racetrack until they are ready to roll. And I'll tell you another thing. If we could listen to some of the end cars, you hear them cutting the engine off and coasting, that's another dead giveaway, too. Dick Bergeron? You sort of flop around pit road you can find stuff like this is some of the tape that they took off the nose of jeff gordon's car and oh by the way as for strategy he said that it felt as if the car would only go about five more laps on the tires so they're thinking about maybe making a pit stop and firing some rubber on it before this 50 lap segment ends well and i think that's going to be the the huge story in this 50 laps jeff hammond talked about it talked about the tires are sliding around and we've been talking about this fuel and again just to maybe tune in our viewers that just are coming to us is these fuel cells you can only go about 45 to 48 laps this is a 50 lap segment so these guys are thinking about okay can we gamble and try to go that distance to try to win this race i think you can sit back here at the back of this field like uh, dale jarrett did earlier and part throttle it and if you got her pack full and uh, you're right on the limit. Don't count anybody out from doing it. 70 hours of coverage across Speed Week 2007 on the Fox Networks. Tomorrow, Daytona 500 qualifying presented by Pizza Hut, 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on Fox. Thursday, the starting lineup for the Daytona 500 will be set on Speed Channel in the Gatorade Duels to win 150-mile races. Friday, it's the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race on Speed. Sunday, Race day on speed gets you ready for the Daytona 500. Coverage at 2 p.m. Eastern time here on Fox. And those dual races on Thursday, they could be the most intense races of speed weeks because after that, we will know who will be in the Daytona 500 and who will not. A lot of takers 100, second gear. on pit 
Road. Stewart, Earnhardt, Kane, Johnson, Bob Pitt Road, Riggs, Newman, and more. And what are they doing? They're topping the field takeoff. Matt? That's exactly right. That was the game plan from the time they left Pitt Road, as it was for a few other teams to come back in, top off. That way, they can make it the distance. Morris said Denny Hamlin and David Gilliland also stop to top off the fuel. Now, we, we need to make this point. As you made the statement, Mike, that they will restart this second segment by how they finished the first segment, but all those cars that just hit Pit Road, they gave up that position. It was actually a race off Pit Road, but I think that could be more important having that fuel in there. It is because it's a double file restart. So it's just like a, a restart of a regular race. You're not going to start single file or anything like that. So uh, it's not a bad move. As David Gilliland got ready to go back to action, Little Raymond, Raymond Fox the third, I saw putting up the window net. His grandfather, Fox's grandfather, Ray Fox, was the winning owner and mechanic the last time a foreign make car raced in NASCAR. August 1963, Junior Johnson led all 200 laps up at Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem. That's Todd Parrott, which is actually David Gilliland's crew chief right there. The all restarts double file in these last 50 laps. So Kevin Harvick has Kurt Busch alongside. Busch came to the caution in third place, but second place Tony Stewart was one of those who ducked onto pit road. So Busch inherits the outside of the front row for this restart. Now you may think that couldn't have made a big difference, just that lap and a half and coming back on pit road, but these cars only get about six and three quarter miles to the gallon. And they need to get seven to make it. So <laughs> gotta try it on the it's right on the edge. It's the kind I like. We'll take this restart from our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam. Pace car to pit road. 50 laps to go. Green flag. Casey Kane in the nine got a great restart. He was able to give Jeff Burton a good push in the 31, who in turn gave Kurt Busch in the two car a great push. Kurt Busch the leader. Jeff Burton in second. Elliott Sadler in the Dodge 19 on the outside of Harvick for third. And here come the hounds. <laughs> When you're sitting out front like that, you better better pick the right lane to fall in front of. Look like Matt Harvick's car is loose on this restart, which tells me they probably freed the car up a little bit so it wouldn't be so tight at the end of this run. And Kurt Busch leads a lap for the first time in this speed week. Oh yeah, that 29 car Harvick's, uh, that thing is fast. Stewart trying to thread the needle on the right of your screen and takes it three wide right up the middle and then drops to the outside. It's such great track presence when you know where you are and where everybody is around you without even They're having low. to look. You can feel it. I believe that's some of that sprint car training where you drive without a rear view mirror. We're going to let you feel it and enjoy all that surround sound and all this horsepower and 185 mile an hour speed. Let's crank it up. Stretch going to turn three. I see a bad moon arising. Tornado is picking up. Winds are blowing. We've got 19 cars less than a second separating them right now. Tony Stewart is just wearing the back end of that 31 car out, and he's going to squeeze his way to the outside. He's got Harvick behind him. 
Stewart just made his own room up on the outside. And he is up to fourth behind Kurt and Kyle Busch. The brothers from Las Vegas are hooked up like a pair of dice. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car made a move to the inside. And he got around Mark Martin in the 01. He's headed back to the front. Looks the Busch like brothers battle for the lead. Looks like a covey of whales. Fast ones. Biggins. Schrader on the bottom behind Kurt Busch. And he took a peek to the inside. Kurt Busch in the two put the block on him. Kurt's been up there kind of holding his own. But now look at the push that Kyle Busch in the five is getting from Tony Stewart in the 20 on the high side. Believe it or not, these guys know what they're doing. They're really, <laughs> these, are, professional. these guys are really good at what they do. You gotta be to be able to do this. 185 miles an hour closer together than people line up at the stoplight. And you can just see them bouncing around yeah. the whole time. You're not a lot, a lot of times you're not steering the car. Ooh, Contact. Ooh. Biffle and Schrader got together. Biffle in the 16, right in the middle. Everybody trying to scatter around him. And Jeff Burton was fishtailing through the triangle. Looked like he had contact with Schrader's 21 and the loss of momentum sent the field scrambling to either side. Uh, Dale Jr. said that first 20 laps didn't mean anything. I thought he was just kidding. He wasn't kidding. <laughs> no, he was not. <laughs> now they're showing what they got. Let's see that again. I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to see it again or not. This is pretty, this is wild right here. Watch the 16, Biffle. Here comes Jr. up under him. Oh, yeah. Bounced off Schrader, the 21, and bounced to the inside. And then watch, watch the, the uh, 29 got into the back of his teammate, 31, of Burton, and they were fishtailing. The contact did not slow Schrader, but Biffle had to lift out of the gas. Last win for the Wood Brothers at Daytona, July 1983, Buddy Baker winning the Firecracker 400. The Wood Brothers have 13 Cup race wins here. Well, in 1998, two brothers finished first and second in this race. The Wallace brothers, Kenny and uh, Rusty. Tell you what, I've been watching Kurt Busch that too far. He's driving it out the back window about as much as he's driving it out the windshield. Last time through one and two, he put the block on his brother Kyle Busch in the five. You want to see if blood is thicker than water? Watch these two brothers in the two and the five. Brotherly love. Oh, brother, we're out. To, to the low. Oh, we're out there, old brother. <laughs> this is, uh uh, not yet. But no. now Kyle Bush is getting that push again from Tony Stewart in the 20. Let's find out if there's any damage to Greg Biffle's car from that contact with Schrader. Krista? No word of any damage on the radio. Greg Biffle talking to his spotter, Joel Emmons, as we speak. Joel said, good job, buddy. You know, he just lost a little bit of momentum. He was running in the middle. He had been working on the bottom a little bit, but squeezed up to the middle, and that's when he got pinched in there a little bit. But he had a tight condition earlier. Said the car's working pretty well. Right now, he's just trying to run on the bottom and get some momentum back. He dropped from 6th all the way down to 12th with that contact. I think that's what Kyle was trying to tell Kurt. Uh, I'm a little better in the front, buddy. Follow by me. Kyle Busch competing in his second Budweiser shootout is your leader. The Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Moving forward. Thirty one laps complete Kyle Busch still the leader over his older brother Kurt Brian Newman Dale Earnhardt Jr. Tony Stewart the front five what was a twenty one car freight train is now twenty cars Jeff Gordon has completely lost the pack when his car shut off and the reason it shut off we were listening to the radio communication during the break is there's a kill switch on the steering wheel that's put there in case the throttle hangs Evidently, Jeff had hit that kill switch, shut all the power off. Now, he's still on the lead lap, but the problem, he's out there by himself, and it's, and it's still not running right. Something's still not right about that race car, though, because here comes the pack through the trial when he's going off into turn one. 
Tony Stewart up against the back bumper of Dale Jr. That is bump drafting. It is perfectly legal. And when done on the straightaways, can propel your car forward, as you just saw. Into the lead. Well, you heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car during his interview during the break. He said he wanted to lead this thing. There he goes on the outside of Kyle Busch down the backstretch. Spent some time with Junior this week, and he told me when that grandstand rises as one, he, he can see them, he can sense it, and it's a huge boost oh, to boy. know that that sea of red is behind him. Here he comes, and here oh, they come to their feet. He is so loose. He's got two, got a car on his outside, Junior, and Tony right up under the back of him. It's really dancing that car around. Kyle Busch in the five, really. In the five, that's what I tell you. He's doing a great job of hanging on that thing in the circumstances. The junior's not going to get the lead that time. Coming off turn four down here when Junior's underneath him and the, or on the outside of him and Tony, watch this. That car is slideways, boys. That thing is out of here. Jeff Gordon down on the apron will pit his I, Hendrick Chevrolet. I think he'll probably just take it to the garage here because uh, being a couple laps down with only 37 laps to go, not a lot you can salvage there. I think he'll make that left-hand turn to the garage, and he wins. This uh, is a non-point race. It's for pride, position, bragging rights, and purse. Right now, the cars that are going to really shine are the guys that have the best handling race cars. We're at that point in the race where you'll start to see these cars kind of spread out a little bit more. And this is when you have trouble. Jeff Hammond. A few minutes ago, we thought maybe Jeff Gordon had a problem with his kill switch, Mike. Right here is the kill switch that's on the steering wheel in case the throttle does stick. If he bumps this button, it will kill the engine. That's what we thought had happened early on, but obviously it's a lot more serious than that. Now, Jeff was a little, Jeff Gordon was a little long diagnosing that because usually on their car, when you hit the kill switch, a red light illuminates on the dash and the light was not on. So he did not initially think that was the problem. But when he reset it, the car did take off. Now, oh, Harvick. look at Harvick in the 29 car got real loose there in the middle of the pack. Yes, <laughs> His voice went up about as high as ours did. Watch that 29. Wow. It's just like the two-car Kurt yeah. Busch was pulling the back of that car around. Well, once it, we're at that point where handling is coming into play, and if you get cars around you now and your car's not handling very good, that's what you're going to get. The front 11 cars are now single file, 34 laps to go in the Budweiser shootout of 2007. The Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by the new Ford Super Duty, built to work harder for you, and by Lowe's, proud home of Jimmy Johnson and Team 48. Kyle Busch continues to lead. He has led since lap 28. Tony Stewart on his tail. Kurt Busch, Elliot Sadler, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, Jimmy Johnson. That little threesome up on the outside there, the 8, the 31, and the 48. I think they're going to try to get a little run up on the outside here. 20 of 21 starters still in this race. Let's go to the garage and meet the other. Krista? Yeah, Jeff Gordon watching his crew take a look at the car. Jeff? Riding around by yourself at Daytona, never what you want to do. What happened to your car? I couldn't even do that. Uh, we have some kind of electrical problem going on in there. It just kept cutting in and out. And uh, I'm just glad it didn't, didn't happen right in the middle of a big pack. We, uh, we had uh, one of those nights going anyway. You know, we had overheating problems right from the beginning. And then we had some handling issues towards the end of that run. And, um, you know, these, these tires are uh, really, uh, you know, really having a hard time getting a hold of the racetrack and tracks fast. So, uh, you know, it wasn't our night. For the DuPont Chevrolet, and hopefully uh, that 500 car has got a lot more form uh, ne next Sunday than, than this one did tonight. All right, Jeff Gordon hoping the bad luck is out of the way for the rest of the speed weeks, guys. 
Thanks, Krista. Dale Jr. climbed the hill and turns one and two. I don't think he scraped the wall, but he didn't miss it by much. But Daryl had pointed it out. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, Jimmy Johnson. Now he's back to the bottom of the racetrack right there. They had started to move up the racetrack. Now we're 20 laps into this segment here, and Darrell, when your car starts to get a little bit loose, it's a lot better to run up high. You don't have to turn the steering wheel as aggressive. A lot of times, I know Junior likes to run that high line late in a run. It's easier on the tires, and there's a little more grip up there, actually. Let's look at him this time into turn one. And he is way up the racetrack. Matt? Mike, no one wants to win a race at Daytona more than Kyle Busch's crew chief, Alan Gustafson. He grew up about seven minutes north in Ormond Beach, Florida, graduated from local Seabreeze High School and spent a lot of time in the garage of Smokey Unic, the late innovator in NASCAR who won here so many times and all throughout NASCAR. He said the biggest thing about their package, they've improved in all the different areas, but especially with the driver. He's learned to be so patient and smart in restrictor plate racing. Dick? And Kurt Busch, car number two, currently running in the third position, also being very smart and very patient about how he is running his race. His crew chief, Roy McCauley, a few moments ago, told Kurt Busch, just hang in there. We're going to be very tight on fuel. Steve. Well, Dick D.W. was right. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wanted help from the 31 and the 48. Junior's crew chief Steve Mill says the problem is, Junior, they can't get to you. That's why he's not getting any help. Still, he's making some progress, though, up on that outside. He seems to run high in one and two, and then he drops it down to the inside in three and four. One and two down low is a lot rougher than it is up high. Three and four is pretty smooth around the bottom. So I think he's really working his car, trying to find where it runs the best. There's no question now that we are 22 laps into this run. We've got 27 laps to go in the race. We see them starting to string out just a little bit. That's a sign that a lot of these cars are starting to handle pretty bad. 21-year-old Kyle Busch from Las Vegas, leading two-time Nextel Cup champion Tony Stewart. Remember, it's not a shootout without a Budweiser. Welcome back to Daytona. Something new in our coverage this year. This is no video game. This is Fox 3D. We're going to be able to replay and analyze incidents by isolating a single car and showing you just about any possible angle from the virtual rendition. That's going to be very cool. Right now, that car. <laughs> We're going to learn our junior in the eight is fifth behind Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart. Kurt Busch and Elliott well, Casey Kane, I believe that was the, the nine car, got real loose. Just about hit the wall coming out of the trial there. Battling Mark Martin, this is for seventh place. And Jeff Burton in the 31 up behind him. Just to the outside of Mark Martin, you can see it just about oh, got down. Boy. I mean, that's about as close as you can come to spinning out and not spinning <laughs> out. That was a that was a wreck that never happened. Pretty well stacked things up behind them. I was going to say about that 3D cam, we're going to love it. I don't know if the drivers are going to like it or not because we're going to be able to see a lot of stuff. Now a four-car breakaway. The Bush brothers with Tony Stewart and Elliott Sadler have some distance on the field with 22 to go. And if indeed these cars are cutting it close on fuel, and I think we can be pretty safe to say they all are, that's about the best that they can do right there is stay in that configuration. We've got another car that's retired, Ryan Newman, the 12. We were getting a report that he felt like his motor was starting to go sour. Newman had run as high as third. Here's Dick Bergman. Well, Larry Mack, they may be cutting it tight on tires as well as on fuel. Kurt Busch, two consecutive laps talked about the car pushing coming off the turns so tight he said that he almost lost it we heard Jeff Burton say the same thing the pace is torrid the tires are wearing it's hang on tight time and when that thing starts to shove that nose it's abusing that right front tire and it's not going to get any better no and what happens is it starts to shove the nose you turn the turn the steering wheel more and more and more to make the car turn the corner then all of a sudden the back end jumps sideways that's what we've seen a couple of times here already like on Casey Kane's car even though he had a little assistance that's kind of how it looks 
Dale Earnhardt Jr., not the only driver who's found his way to the top of the racetrack in turns one and two. 21 laps to go in Daytona. Eighteen laps to go. Caution is out. First caution of the night, other than the planned caution at the 20-lap mark. You can about be safe to say there's about 19 drivers and 19 <laughs> crew chiefs that went just with no. Oh, we can come and get uh, more no. tires. They are go. throwing calculators and <laughs> notepads there on the ground. So why did we even bother? <laughs> Well, four times this race had gone caution-free. Tonight will not be the fifth. And everyone who was nervously wondering as the laps wound down, and so did the fuel load, it's time for those seven men over the wall to earn their keep. Because in this instance, unlike during the break after lap 20, once you complete your service, the first car that leaves pit road will be the first car in line among those who choose to stop. Now the pits are closed. Red flag waving, red lights on. <laughs> but Larry, for the teams that intended to gamble, what does this caution flag mean? I mean, it throws it out the window. There's okay. no question. We, we're going to get this start race restarted with about 14, 15 laps to go. You've got to have four tires, and of course, you go ahead and you put the fuel in it and make adjustments based on knowing that this is only going to be about a 12 to 15 lap run. I'm going to get me two tires, and I'm going to get me just a teeny bit of gas, and I'm getting out of here. What are you going to do? I'm going to get four. These tires are sliding around so bad, I believe I want four tires, and I bet you most of those drivers down there, too. Tony Stewart, you are a two-time national champion. <laughs> it's time to earn your money. Well, I'm with Larry. I want four tires. Jeff Hammond, how about you? Mike, I, I, you guys, I, tell that driver up there to be quiet and drive the darn thing. Let us crew members and crew chiefs put the tires on there. He that isn't what we tires. called you about. What are you going to do? <laughs> four tires. Four tires. <laughs> Let's you check just, up and down. Be quiet. I'm going to be by pit road entrance before you get done. Let's get down to pit road. Krista? Well, this caution is very good news for Denny Hamlin despite coming in and topping off before the second segment began this team was preparing to be four laps short on fuel so this is very good news for the defending Budweiser shootout that they have a chance to put more fuel in their car Matt a lot of conversation on Kyle Busch and Tony Stewart's radio now you're hearing some crew chiefs tell their drivers make sure you don't slide your tires keeping open the option of just taking some fuel only Stewart says his car is great Kyle Busch says my car's a little bit tight Let's see how the strategy plays out. Steve? Matt, this pit stop may also, uh, caution may also be a big break for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said, I felt like my right front tire was starting to tear up. Dick? When that yellow flag flew, you could hear the relief in Kurt Busch's voice when he called to his crew and said, four tires. He wants to be a little bit on the free side. That's what they're going to try to set the car up for. Kevin Harvey, who pits right in front of him, has an engine problem. He's losing power. Everybody's on pit road. All 20 cars come to the pit lane during this caution for debris in the front straightaway near the entrance to pit road. Denny, Denny Hamlin, Hamlin, four tires. David Gilliland, four tires. Tony Stewart in the 20 car, four tires. Kyle Busch in first, out first. The 19 car, Elliot Sadler took two tires. Kyle Busch, the five car, two tires. Most everyone else gets four. So now we have a real Saturday night shootout on our hands. A dozen or so green flag laps to settle this. Yeah, the, I mean, these cautions count, and we're at 54, be 55. We're only going to be about four laps to go when we take green. The big gainer, Casey Kane, picks up five positions in the race off pit road. Dale Jr. lost a few spots as he overshot his pit box here. Welcome back to Daytona. Here's our Pizza Hut race summary. Kevin Harvick was the leader after the first segment of 20 laps and the scheduled caution flag. Jeff Gordon, electrical problems, out of the race at lap 31. His teammate Kyle Busch has led 32 laps. Most of any driver tonight. Double file restart. Kyle Busch, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, Kenny Schrader, and Brian Vickers, the top 10. Dale Earnhardt Jr. overshot his pit, had to back up for service, and went from third to tenth. 
We expected a green flag this time. They've waved it off. You see the lights flashing still atop the pace car. That indicates they will not restart. We'll have one more lap of caution. So let's get some updates on pit stops. Krista? Well, David Gillel in the 38, they were not planning on coming in had that caution not come out, but the car was developing a bit of a tight condition, so they made a track bar and an air pressure adjustment. David Gillel is calm because he has a secret weapon upstairs. Ricky Rudd is spotting for him tonight. His teammate, David Gillel, has been very good all night. Matt? The top two cars, Kyle Busch and the nine of Casey Kane, they played their hands strategy-wise. Two tires. Now, Kyle Busch's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, he did it basically to try to keep Kyle out front. Felt like their car was better out front pulling the field and stuck back two or three cars in line. So they're trying to get that five car to victory lane. Steve? Well, Matt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is pretty loose in that number eight race car. He, when he overshot the pits, he said, guys, there might be something wrong with the brakes. Nah, I just made a mistake. I just wanted to start on the inside on the restart anyways. Dick? Well, Kurt Busch took four, took four tires, and his crew did a great job. He is restarting this event in the four spot. Jeff Burton, four tires. Mark Martin, four tires. He said if he can just get somebody to push him along, he's got a car good enough to win. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, also four tires. He was a little bit tight. Harvick, four tires. They did nothing with that engine that is losing power. Thanks, Dick. Look at the uh, nose of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Chevrolet. Got a bit of damage coming onto pit road. Cosmetic damage. Got a little of Elliot Sadler's white paint. Elliot was slowing down to turn into his pits, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is well on down pit road. Casual, very casual. Ten lead changes among six different drivers. Kyle Busch is leading this race. He started sixth. The last time someone started sixth or better and won the Budweiser shootout, Tony Stewart, who started third back in 2002. One thing I like about a little conservative tire package, and that's what this is, it gives you options. You're not wearing out the tires. They're losing grip, so now you can take two, gamble a little bit. 13 laps to race when they get to the line, and Kyle Busch is on it and in a hurry. Kane and, and Kyle Busch, like Matt reported, they have the two tires, and I'm not sure there would be speed in the left side tires, Daryl, but I just wonder, can they maneuver it like they need to versus those guys that have four fresh tires? Yeah, if you're sitting out front, don't have to do a lot of maneuvering. Just protect that yellow line like that, and uh, hang on. Stewart has help from his teammate, last year's shootout winner, Denny Hamlin. But Tony Stewart, as fast as his car is, with those four tires, he didn't need a lot to give him advantage. And look on the outside lane as <laughs> Jeff Burton oh, drops Jeff. way low and is back in line. In the outside lane, the Dodge outside, boys are hooked up. Outside, bottom of three, bottom of three. And you cannot go below that yellow line and advance your position. They looked at as out of bounds. Burton, when he had to back off, lost that momentum, precious momentum, and got freight trained on the outside. Now he's trying to work back up. Oh, boy. And there goes Kurt Busch. He's in trouble. Long way. No He's help in, in the trouble. That number two lost his drafting partner. Boy, and he was up there fighting for the lead. Speaking of fighting, Mark Martin's car went way up the racetrack. That's the Army car just in front of Dale Jr. And Kyle Busch draws ahead just a bit. Oh, Tony Stewart. They think being out front's a place to be, and I believe it is, too. That five car made a good move. And like you mentioned, Darrell, that's what he's got to do right there. And Tony Stewart got him just a little bit loose right there, but he's got to protect that bottom. If someone's going to pass him, they're going to have to do it on the high side. Yeah, and he's he's been a little loose in. We've seen that earlier tonight, particularly on these restarts. Look who's coming. Gilliland in the 38. Pulls up. Passes Sadler. And now David Gilliland, the only rookie in this race, is back up into the top Boy, five. And here comes Jimmy Johnson squeezing his way in under, behind, under Denny Hamlin. Oh, Denny Hamlin, the 11, opened the door just enough to let Jimmy Johnson in there. Yeah, he couldn't come down because Jimmy was there. Starter has both hands outstretched. Ten laps to go. Yeah. 
Junior's up on that high side, especially down here in one and two. That really seems to work for him. That keeps that engine wound up. Gives him a good run off the corner. He just doesn't have a lot of help there now. There. You can see him go right by Denny Hamlin in the 11. Shoot off that corner and down the back straightaway. Hamlin fights back. Whoa. That looked funny. Go outside, clear. Clear all around. Look at that Kyle 11 Bush, car. Tony Stewart, and look who's third. The rookie. Last year, Denny Hamlin won this race as a rookie. David Gilliland has never raced a cup car at Daytona, but he doesn't know what it won't do. He's up to third. No, but his crew chief knows what it'll do, and he's got a good one. And now they've shuffled Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car to the high side. He's going to go all the way back to the seventh position. I think that when Todd Parrott told David Gilliland to take care of your car, we'll fix that fender that he got damaged earlier. He's been very, very patient and working himself right back to the front where he is right now. And look at the swarm behind those front four single file. Everybody jumping in line, out of line. How can I get to the front? Yeah, the buddy system isn't working right now. The buddy system's off. No, the buddy system's over. Seven cars, single file, double file from there on back. And wait till next Sunday on Fox when the Daytona 500 starts 43 of these cars. Boy, did you there, see what? There he goes. They almost opened the door for him. Oh, you, I, I, I knew that was coming. He got him loose going in, switched over from the right to the left real quick, got him loose, pushed him out of the way. And here comes David Gilliland back there in second place in that 38 car. And there's Jeff Burton in the 31, fighting to the outside for third place. They lost a little bit of momentum there with the five car in the 20 when he made contact. That let these guys there on the outside, like Burton, really close back up. And now this is where those two tires hurt Kyle Busch back there in the pack. He definitely can't maneuver now. Well, and it also caused him to lose a lot of grip down here in the corner when Tony got up around him the way he did. How mad is Kyle Busch right now, and what can he do about it? There's not a thing he can do about it right now. And just remember what we said at the top of the show. This is all about winning. There's no points. You didn't come here for just a good, solid finish. I don't know, I don't know if I like the way you said that, Larry. There's nothing he can do about it right now. <laughs> Tony Stewart trying to win his third race of the year. He won at Fort Wayne, and he won the Chili Bowl in Tulsa during the NASCAR offseason. David Gilliland, whose father was a great West Coast racer, Butch Gilliland, won some titles out West. David hopped in an unsponsored Bush car, partial schedule car, won a big race to the attention of Robert Yates, got the cup ride when Elliott Sadler left in the Yates camp. Everybody said, David who? Now they know. David against Goliath right now, and I'll tell you something. Kurt Busch in that two car got shuffled all the way almost to the back. There he is, back up and forth. Krista? Well, we mentioned that Ricky Rudd is up top giving this driver advice when he needs it. He doesn't need any advice right now. So Earl Barbin, the spotter for the rest of the year, is back on the mic telling David that he is all clear. Now, Greg Biffle may not win this race, but he may be a prognosticator. He said about 20 laps ago, guys, David Gilliland is going to win this thing. Thanks, Krista. We saw David march his way methodically up through the field, never put a wheel wrong, never got out of straight uh, shape, hugged the bottom of the racetrack. When other drivers made moves, he moved up Glad to cover the spot. Five laps to go. Let's go back to that Tony Stewart move on the five real quickly, because you won't believe what Tony... Tony really moved him out of the way long before he ever bumped into him. Watch this. He goes... Well, this is when he put the push on him right here. But he got him in that position by making a couple of moves across the back of that car. Alan Gustafson and crew weren't pleased to see their driver fall from the lead after leaving, uh, leading the most laps tonight. And now Kyle is really starting to fall backwards. Remember, that bump, that's happening at over 185 miles per hour down there in the corner. Four laps to go. And Tony Stewart up until the green flag in the Budweiser shootout, has had a horrible day. In Daytona 500 qualifying practice early, he was on his mock qualifying run when a caution came out. They had to take the car to the garage, cool it down. About an hour later, he finally did get to make 
a run. They had a fuel pump problem. Then he finally got to make a run and was ninth fastest on the day. But it has been a trying day for Tony Stewart. All that's forgotten now. He's out front here with three and a half laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car, bringing Kyle Busch the five with him to the bottom. It's not sure they're going to have near enough laps to get up to the front, though. No, and it's going to be really, it's going to take some help uh, behind it. for Gilliland to be able to pull out and make a pass on Tony Stewart. Tony's car is really, really fast. Three laps to go as they come to the stripe. Right there. Stewart's Chevrolet, Gilliland's Ford, and Sadler's Dodge, the front three. Vickers is the first Toyota. He's in ninth place. Now, if if Sadler, if, if he could get up to the back bumper of Gilliland and really get him a push, give him a push down the back, they might be able to make something happen. But now Kurt Busch. Oh, here comes Kurt He Bush. got Sadler up high a little bit. He's trying to take third place away with help from Harvick in the 29. Kevin Harvick gives him a little push into turn three and look at him go by the Dodge on the outside. And he's out there with no help right now. That's pretty impressive, that two car to come back. Because I'm telling you, he was caught three wide, went all the way to the back, and here he is up in third place, got a shot. Our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam suspended by cables above the start finish line, where in just two laps, somebody is going to hit the bank. Well, we know what Tony Stewart in the 20 car is going to do for five more miles. He's going to hug that yellow line right, right there. Boy, I tell you, Gillen is really close enough. He loses a little ground off a of two right there. Car's probably a little tight. If he can get some help from behind, he might be able to make a run down the back going into three. And that's the big question. Will that number two of Kurt Busch help him or go his own way? That's dictated by what kind of run he has. If he's got a passing run, Kurt might go with him. If he's just got to get out there and get hung run, he's going to get hung out to dry. One lap to go. Somebody is about to win at least $215,000. Kurt Busch keeps peeking around back there in that two car. Got, you got to get closer together than that. Dale Earnhardt won this race a record six times. Jeff Gordon, three-time winner. Nobody else has won more than two. Excuse me, Dale Jarrett's a three-time winner. Nobody else has banked more than two. Tony Stewart could win his third right here. Here they come for the flag. Whoa. Big crash. Denny Hamlin involved. Stewart, Gilliland, Bush, the finish. Tony Stewart wins his third Budweiser shootout. As Elliot Sadler and Denny Hamlin come across the line in a shower of sparks. Last year's winner in the infield wreck on the last lap. Within about 200 yards of the start finish line. See, I think I've seen every hand cars torn up more the last couple of laps of races than anybody cars I could remember. And Kyle Bush, who led the most laps, has to be satisfied with seven. Nice job, Tony. <laughs> and how about the rookie David Gilliland? That's pretty impressive, boys. Finishing second to Stewart by 13 one hundredths of a second. Well, he got there he is. The back. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This is uh, awesome. But you know what this does? It just gives him more and more confidence every time he has a run like this. With a team like he has, Todd Parrott on the pit box, the way that car runs, yeah, I'd say they got a lot to look forward to next Sunday. Elliot Sadler and Dale Earnhardt Jr., both okay. Jr. drives away. And Denny Hamlin climbs out. Last year a winner. This year crashed on the final lap. I wish you'd look at that. Both the raised cars torn all the pieces. It's amazing. Now again, these are not the cars that they will race in the Daytona 500. And in qualifying tomorrow, Stewart has a signature celebration. Not sure he'll get to do it here tonight, but let's look at this finish. Watch the 19 and the 11 and the 8. Uh, I think Junior got in the back of uh, Elliott. And that, nowhere for Denny Hamlin and, to go. And Elliott then went down the hill, down the track into the 11 almost turned him over and 
Here comes his teammate, Casey Kane, and rams into the side of the 11 car. Greg Biffle was also involved. And you know, Mike, none of these cars are their Daytona 500 cars, but a lot of them are their backup Daytona 500 cars. Hard to tell if Sadler was already a little loose when Dale Jr. got to him. But there certainly was enough contact to send him around. This look here may uh, may give it to us. Look pretty, looked to me like the eight probably got into the back of the 19. Just enough to turn him. Yeah, right there. Doesn't take much no. at that kind of speed. Riding with Elliot Sadler. Well, that was a hard lick on Denny Hamlin, the 11. I think that's Casey Kane's yeah. car. Yeah, I'm just checking that. That was Casey Kane. Still inside. He got out of hell. Yep. Yeah. There is Sadler. Yeah. And I thought maybe Sadler lifted, but it sure didn't sound like it. It just sounded like it maybe Junior lifted him up off the ground and got him sideways. This ought to be a, this ought to tell the tale right here. Now let's use our Fox 3D here, which uses GPS positioning to show where the cars were when things started to happen. See that little nudge? Little bump right there. And away they went. Everybody walked away. That's the good news. But there are some badly damaged race cars. We'll go to victory lane and Steve Burns. Tony Stewart wins his third Budweiser shootout. Mike climbs out of that number 20 Home Depot Chevrolet. Gets congratulations from Greg Zipadelli and uh, Tony. You said the other night this was the happiest you had ever been coming into a season. Talk about your frame of mind and talk about that gutsy move on the five car to get past him. I mean, we were really good. We were, we, Speed-wise, we were unbelievable. But, uh, you know, with, with uh, two Chevys up front like that and a Ford behind us, I was a little nervous. But I was uh, sandwiched in between some Bush brothers before uh, the caution comes out. But we, we just, you know, I, I knew when we came out of the pits and, and saw that the nine car took two, and I knew the five took two, but uh, that at least got us back with the five, and that's who I wanted to run with. We were really good combination together, and I was wondering if the tires were going to become a factor, and I finally got a chance to to really push him real hard into one once, and it got him loose, and then he went up the track a little bit, and then when he tugged it down, I caught him right there and, and didn't touch him, but just caught him enough that, that, you know, Goodyear's really put all of us in a bind with this hard tire. It's just so hard to drive these things after you get laps on them, but... Uh, you know, it, uh, that was the save of the year. I mean, Kyle did an awesome job, and I, I don't know how many guys could have saved that car. He did an awesome job catching it. All right, thanks. Congratulations, Tony. Krista? Chevy? Perhaps he feels like a winner, that's for sure. As David Gillen pulled his car up, your crew chief, Todd Parrott, said, now that's what I'm talking about. Can you even put into words what you're feeling right now? No, just a lot, a lot of excitement, you know. To, just very proud to be able to bring home the M&M's Ford Fusion. Uh, you know, a great finish. Um, you know, we, our main thing is to try and get this thing started off this year, start off with a little momentum, and I really, really feel like we have a great chance coming in here. You know, Todd Parrott and all the guys at the shop worked their tails off all winter, and uh, I think the two tests and, and this coming out like this just shows how very hard they've worked, and, and Robbie H. Racing is back, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. All right, we're excited to see what you can do on Sunday. To Dick. The terrific run to finish in third position. What did you need to get those other two cars? I just I keep building my restrictor play program, whether it's the team or myself. I feel like we're getting closer. But the gold World Beer Cup car for Miller Lite did great in the shootout tonight. Terrific job. Matt, we've caught up with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr., what happened on that final lap? I very bit self-explanatory. If you watch the tape, I got in the back of Elliott trying to bump draft, and he wasn't up on the straightaway yet. So I got into him too early and, and uh, wrecked him and wrecked both eight race cars. So I'm sorry about that. But, um, you know, we just... You know, we're back there trying to do what we could do, and I was trying to help a friend of mine and uh, just got over overzealous and overdid it. And he came by to make sure he was all right. You saw him up on the front stretch. Mike? Earnhardt Jr. finishes 15th, Sadler 16th, and Hamlin 17th. 
as Tony Stewart notches the fourth Budweiser shootout victory for car owner Joe and J.D. Gibbs. His own fourth win in this all-star sort of race. David Gilliland, the rookie, gets the glass slipper, second place. Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvin. Welcome back to Daytona. We hope you'll be with us on Fox tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Daytona 500 qualifying presented by Pizza Hut as we get you ready for the Daytona 500 a week from Sunday at 2 Eastern. And don't forget on speed, the Gatorade duels on Thursday help set the field for the great American race. Tony Stewart has never won, you know, two-time champion. He's never won the Daytona 500. Jeff Hamm and Chris Myers back there. Hollywood Hotel is for trackside. But he got off to a good start tonight. In fact, the last time he won the Budweiser shootout, 2002 he went on to win the championship so off to a flying start what else did we learn tonight i think we learned he's got a very good handling race car and besides that right there kurt bush may be having his program kind of come around as far as restrictive plates concerned but how about that rookie david gilliland he's no definitely no fake as far as that's concerned he'll probably be one of the cars you got to watch tomorrow possibly sitting that thing on the pole we heard tony stewart talk about tires being a challenge the hard tires for the drivers well we've already it's kind of like talked about the all along it's a harder tire because of bigger fuel cells but when you talk about how ill handling these cars were tonight wait till thursday when this track gets hot and slick the uh, drivers for the Daytona 500, uh, more track time tonight. The Daytona 500 starting later this year, so actually more run under the light. So an advantage for those drivers that were in tonight's race as they get ready a week from tomorrow. Information is invaluable. I don't care who it is. And the key thing is you just better hope that one of your teammates, if you didn't get a chance to run it, you know, like Carl Edwards, you better hope that you got a lot of good information out of your teammates. Promotional considerations provided by these fine people. The Budweiser shootout here at Daytona, 21 drivers, and Tony Stewart pulling into victory lane. High-speed action tomorrow at 2 Eastern on Fox, qualifying for the Daytona 500, and we hope you're with us a week from tomorrow for the Daytona 500. For all of us, thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox.